We may be in for an exciting few weeks, as SpaceX has just moved Booster 9 to the launch mount ahead of testing. This move marks the start of preparations for Starship's upcoming second test flight, which could see the craft finally reach orbit. Let's talk about these imminent tests and how the Falcon 9 continues to dominate orbital cargo deliveries. And while we're at it, we'll also cover what Virgin Galactic has been up to. It's been several months since Starship's first orbital flight test, and now Super Heavy Booster 9 is being moved to the orbital launch pad at Starbase for testing before its next flight. SpaceX is excited about this second test because the first one didn't go so well. It caused a lot of damage to the launch pad. And unfortunately, Ship 24 and B-7 were lost in the sky over Texas. The preparations began on July 20th, when Booster 9 embarked on its trip down Highway 4, riding on an SPMT. Along the way, it joined forces with Ship 25, and together they reached the launch site. Approximately an hour after reaching the orbital launch site, Booster 9 found its safe spot snugly between SpaceX's two massive arms connected to the launch tower. These arms are responsible for lifting the approximately 7-meter-tall rocket and placing it onto the launch mount. While Elon Musk envisions a future where these arms catch Starship and Super Heavy mid-air, for now, their current role is to replace the tall and cumbersome crane that was previously used to lift each stage. The arms are a highly intricate and sophisticated solution, offering SpaceX the advantage of remotely lifting, installing, and removing Starship stages. This setup also protects these crucial processes from being affected by wind conditions, which are a significant concern when using traditional cranes. However, during this particular instance, it appears that there was an issue with Mechazilla, the system responsible for executing these lifts. As a result, the engineers faced difficulties in immediately positioning Booster 9 as intended. After around two hours of troubleshooting, the engineers were finally able to solve these issues, and B-9 is now firmly standing on the launch mount. This maneuver utilizing the advanced arms is a crucial component of SpaceX's strategy to achieve reusability for its Starship and Super Heavy platform. By remotely lifting, installing, and removing Starship stages with precision, they can streamline the process and make it more efficient. After all, Elon Musk has expressed the ambitious goal of achieving a high Starship launch cadence, aiming for multiple launches a day. As for Booster 9, once it is safely positioned and securely held in place by multiple hold-down clamps and connected to ground systems, SpaceX will move forward with conducting engine static fire tests before the end of this month. Successfully completing this test is a critical milestone that will set the stage for the return of a full-stack Starship by early August. Following that achievement, the subsequent launch is planned for the middle of the same month. Additionally, these static fire tests will also allow SpaceX to test out their new water deluge system, which they hope will significantly lower the chance of damage to the launch pad and the vehicle itself during liftoff. But before the actual static fires commence, B-9 will have to undergo one or more white dress rehearsals. These rehearsals simulate a launch, but halt the process just before the moment of ignition. If SpaceX goes ahead with a full white dress rehearsal, it would be a groundbreaking event for Super Heavy. During this test, the booster would be loaded with more than 3,000 tons or 6.6 .6 million pounds of liquid oxygen and liquid methane. This would not only be a first for Super Heavy, but also a significant trial for the orbital launch site itself. Another important aspect that Booster 9 will have to test out is its autogenous pressurization system. This innovative system replaces the traditional use of helium with hot oxygen and methane gas to pressurize the rocket's propellant tanks. Once all the necessary tests and preparations are successfully completed, the next step will be to integrate Booster 9 with Ship 25 ahead of launch. Speaking of which, unfortunately, Ship 27 has been cut in half for scrapping. However, this process will pave the way for a better beginning, perhaps by salvaging valuable components or repurposing materials for other projects. On a brighter note, Ship 28 is fortunate to be embarking on a different path. It has departed the high bay, indicating that it is ready to move on to the next stage of its development. As the development of the Starship progresses, SpaceX's Falcon 9 continues to shine brightly. Recently, it showcased its reliability and success with a picture-perfect Starlink mission.
In an overnight mission, SpaceX successfully launched 15 of its Starlink satellites, steadily expanding its broadband mega constellation. The liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket took place on July 20th from SpaceX's facilities at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Amidst a thin layer of fog, the Falcon 9 ascended from pad SLC-4E at the California launch site, carrying 15 Starlink version 2 mini-satellites. While this is a successful launch, it's worth noting that the number of satellites launched from Vandenberg is slightly fewer compared to the 21 to 22 satellites that can be launched into the same orbit from Cape Canaveral. This is due to the rocket's trajectory during the launch. To avoid flying over populated areas and to ensure safety, the Falcon 9 must maneuver around islands off the California coast. This maneuver, known as a dogleg, involves making a turn to the east to achieve the correct trajectory for the intended orbit. However, this dogleg maneuver burns additional fuel and reduces the Falcon 9's lift capacity. As a result, the rocket must carry a slightly smaller payload to its designated orbit from Vandenberg. The Falcon 9 booster used in this launch was on its 10th flight, demonstrating its impressive reusability. Approximately nine and a half minutes after liftoff, the booster successfully touched down on SpaceX's drone ship named Of Course I Still Love You, which was positioned about 660 kilometers downrange in the Pacific Ocean. This achievement marked the completion of SpaceX's 48th orbital mission of the year. It's quite a rare sight, but Vandenberg, which is often characterized by foggy and overcast conditions during most launches, had the luck of experiencing unusually clear weather for this particular mission. On this special night, only a thin layer of fog covered the launch area, creating a picturesque backdrop for the Falcon 9's ascent to orbit. The stunning visuals of the rocket's journey were beautifully captured by SpaceX, and a few hours after the launch, they shared some of these breathtaking photos on Twitter. SpaceX has since followed up with two more successful Falcon 9 launches, with one on July 23rd and the latest on July 28th. Both missions launched from SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral, carrying new batches of Starlink's V-2 mini-satellites. SpaceX is not the only company that has been keeping busy, though. Following its successful first commercial launch, Virgin Galactic is now gearing up for its second commercial mission, named Galactic 2. The launch is scheduled to take place no earlier than the 10th of August. This upcoming flight holds particular significance as it will mark Virgin Galactic's first private astronaut mission. After months of thorough testing, including both crewed and uncrewed flights of the VSS Unity spacecraft, the company is now ready to venture into private commercial space travel. Galactic One, the first commercial mission that took place on June 29th, was a government scientific research mission carried out by members of the Italian Air Force, among others, and was regarded as a massive success for the company. Galactic Zero Two is set to make history by achieving several notable milestones for Virgin Galactic. It will be the first mission to carry a former Olympian and individuals from the Caribbean into space, as announced by the company. The crew on board will also include a unique mother-daughter duo, another first for spaceflight. The former Olympian joining this groundbreaking mission is 80-year-old British adventurer John Goodwin, who competed in canoeing at the 1972 Summer Games in Munich. This is a particularly significant moment as Goodwin has Parkinson's disease, making him only the second person with this condition to journey into space. Adding to the crew's diversity and pioneering spirit, there will be a mother and daughter team, Keisha Shahoff and Anastasia Myers, from the Caribbean nation of Antigua and Barbuda. They were given the opportunity to be part of Galactic 2 through a sweepstakes organized by Virgin Galactic and the charity fundraising platform Omaze in 2021. Currently, a ticket for a flight on VSS Unity is priced at approximately 450,000 US dollars. Considering that there is a queue for flights, it's likely that these passengers purchased their tickets a long time ago when ticket sales first became available. The exact number of passengers waiting for flights is not officially confirmed, but various reports indicate that the company has sold more than 800 tickets over the years. Virgin Galactic has a long way to go before it can satisfy its many customers. But the announcement of the Galactic 2 mission is a step in the right direction and will hopefully lead to a steady launch cadence for the company. The company must stay focused, though, as competition lurks around the corner.
Once the Starship is operational, it will become the largest space tourism vehicle on the planet and may become a threat to Virgin Galactic's business endeavors. What do you think? Will the Starship be ready for crewed flights before Virgin Galactic can finish its passenger list? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.